Something tells me that if you clicked on this video, you want to know about prehistoric Britain. So, let's begin. First of all, let's get this clear. Prehistory is commonly divided into three ages. Stone Age, Bronze Age and Iron Age. The Stone Age is further divided into three periods too. Paleolithic, Mesolithic and Neolithic. Setting a start or ending on these periods is difficult because they vary according to region and sometimes they overlap. So, keep that in mind. Now, let's begin. We have to go back in time, a time before history. No, that's far too back in time. Where we want to go is to the last ice age. Last ice age! Welcome to Paleolithic Britain. Britain was a peninsula. In fact, Britain was not Britain yet, but let's call it in that way. It has been intermittently inhabited for at least 500,000 years. Its first inhabitant was the Homo heidelbergensis. Neanderthals came in 300,000 years ago and Homo sapiens did it 40,000 years ago, give or take. These peoples were hunter-gatherers who followed herds and made stone tools. They came and went from and to continental Europe. Climate regularly switched between warm and cold periods, also called interglacial and glacial periods. And in 10,000 BC, the last of the great glacial periods ended. The world was getting hotter and hotter and hotter. The ice began to melt and Britain became fertile and sea levels began to rise. Soon, plants began to grow and animals began to multiply. Where once there was ice, now were forests. This is Mesolithic Britain. With more welcoming climate, people began to come back, looking for animals, fish and other food. It is believed that people built houses but didn't stay permanently. In fact, they came and went seasonally, following game and good weather. They started to make more complex tools, combining stone with wood. Mesolithic people built small communities closely connected with nature, but nature didn't care. And at around 6100 BC, <laughs> Tsunami struck and the cataclysmic wave finally flooded the narrow bridge that still connected Britain to the continent. Britain was now an island. And this is the beginning of the Neolithic, a starting point of major changes in human history. Gradually, people began to produce food instead of acquiring it. Farming led to permanent settlements, and these led to bigger and stronger communities. They grew barley and wheat, and they also raised sheep, goats, cattle and pigs. From about 3500 BC, new types of communal monuments appeared. Timber circles, circular earthwork called henges, and from about 3000 BC, stone circles such as Castlerigg, Avebury and of course Stonehenge. These monuments seem to represent attempts to create sacred spaces. These were the settings for elaborate religious ceremonies which may have been connected to beliefs about the fertility of people, animals and crops. This is the Bronze Age. Around 2500 BC, migrants came into Britain. These were the Bell Beaker people. They brought together metalworking skills and a whole new culture. They were called in that way because of the shape of the pottery vessels they made. But most importantly, the Beaker people brought a new sense of self and individuality. 
whereas during the Late Stone Age people were buried in communal tombs, during the Bronze Age people started being buried alone, together with their favorite possessions. Another development in this age is housing. Bronze Age Britons built houses where they could live permanently. Farm houses built to last a lifetime. Permanent houses led to the creation of the first villages. It was also a time where many trade networks were developed. Copper, tin and bronze objects were rapidly traded across Europe. For certain, Britain was separated from the continent, but was really connected by commerce. The Iron Age in Britain started around 800 BC when the Celts brought iron work into the Isles. They produced fine metalwork and enjoyed feasting, music and poetry. This new metal was used for tools, which made farming much easier than ever before. People lived in hill forts which were surrounded by walls and ditches and warriors defended their people from enemy attacks. Inside hill forts families lived in round houses. In the center of a round house was a fire where meals were cooked in a cauldron. The inhabitants of Iron Age Britain did not live any written records, so we only know about them through their fashion. People expressed their identity through their clothes, jewelry and belongings. People believed in powerful spirits, they met to worship the spirits in sacred places. Priests known as druids led religious ceremonies such as sacrifice animals and sometimes humans and gave precious offerings to the spirits. During the British Iron Age, large tracts of land in southern and eastern Britain were used to produce crops and the Celts who lived there were skilled farmers. Farming methods remained substantially unchanged amongst the British peasantry from the Iron Age to the 17th century. To round up this video, remember that prehistoric Britain is divided into three, Stone Age, Bronze Age and Iron Age. Remember that for your next exam. And that's the end of this lesson. Sometimes we can think that the tales we have told here don't have much in common with us, for they are past, forgotten, or not even written down. But some still stand tall, very much alive today. Leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye!